The Yasido Chicken Harness, hen-sized with a six-foot matching leash, is a popular item on Amazon, and for good reason. It's comfortable, breathable, stylish, and suitable not only for chickens, but also for ducks and small geese, allowing your fowl of choice premium luxury. But it's not for economists to question why a person might feel the need to walk their chicken, but instead to ask, is walking your chicken with the Yasido chicken harness actually good for the US economy? Hi, I'm Matt Sofa, and this is Study Hall, Macroeconomics. Generally, spending more is good for an economy. In theory, it means firms will up production and hire more labor, which in turn makes for more jobs for workers, giving them more money to then go and spend. And all those satisfied US customers who dropped dollars on the Yasido chicken harness were definitely spending. But it's not that simple. Economists have all sorts of different measurements when it comes to evaluating economic health, all of which can do a pretty good job of showing real patterns and trends, but can't always get a full picture of what this means for the folks who are doing the spending. And one of the most common economic measures is gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP is a measure of production. It refers to the market value of all domestically made final goods and services produced legally and on the books within a given period of time, usually a year. Basically, the price of all the finished stuff made and purchased in a year added up together to one huge total. Even though countries have pretty much always been producing, and that production has always had effects on the national economy, GDP as we know it is actually a relatively new measurement. It became widely accepted in 1944, making it about 80. Definitely old enough to qualify for AARP, but still young enough to take advantage of its generous discounts on travel, lodging, dining, and entertainment. GDP was widely adopted in response to a huge international event, World War II. You may have heard of it. Following the war, many countries had a lot of rebuilding to do, of infrastructure, of national and international trust, and of their economies. And even countries who weren't decimated by years of warfare were on the precipice of a huge economic boom. But how to track and manage this rapid economic expansion? G to the D to the P, baby. And we're still using it today as the main measure of economic activity year to year. Since GDP is measured over a specific period of time, like a week, a month, a quarter, or most commonly a year, it's considered a flow variable. And just like a household might compare income from one year to the next, macroeconomists are interested in comparing GDP over months and years to see if the economy has grown and the country is producing more stuff than the year before. And that gives a pretty good idea of how a country's economy is doing in general. Higher GDP in a country means that the people who live there probably have more money to spend and firms are producing lots of goods. But if a country has low GDP, it could mean that its citizens don't have enough money to spend on products or services, or not enough products are being produced in the first place. But in the years following GDP's debut on the world economic stage, there were already economists worrying about its ability to tell us about life in a country, long-term economic health, or anything but exactly what it's measuring, levels of production. So when you spend your pocket change, whether it be on chicken harnesses or other more practical goods and services, it's a little debatable as to whether or not you're actually helping out your fellow countrymen. But you, you are certainly boosting your country's GDP and flowing more money into the market with some important caveats. See, calculating GDP isn't as easy as adding up all the expenditures of all the citizens of a country and pressing go. Only domestically made Final goods and services produced legally and on the books during a given period of time count towards a country's GDP. So even though a ton of satisfied Yasido chicken harness customers live in the US, those harnesses don't add up towards US GDP because the manufacturing company is based in China. When those US customers drop cash on its resilient, breathable, comfortable fabric, their money actually leaves the US economy and enters China's economy, boosting Chinese production and GDP instead. But a domestically produced chicken harness is a horse of a different color. A bird in a different harness? Even if the parent company is based somewhere outside the country. If you're looking to increase US GDP with your purchase, any made in the USA chicken harness will do, as long as it's produced and sold in a formal market. Homemade goods and services, or those sold under the table, also don't count towards a country's GDP. That's because GDP only measures official transactions within a country's economy. 
black market activities like drug dealing or chicken harness racketeering are unregulated, which means they're not reported to authorities and are therefore not included in official economic statistics like GDP. Same goes with those knit harnesses your Nana makes for her flock. <clears throat> Other off-the-books exchanges that don't make it into GDP are things like mowing a neighbor's lawn, babysitting your niece, or any of the daily cooking, cleaning, and organizing it takes to run a household. Even though taking your son to soccer practice three times a week is definitely a domestically produced service. Another thing that won't contribute to GDP is buying a used chicken harness from a local thrift shop or free and for sale group. Even if it's easier on both your wallet and on the planet. GDP only includes new products produced in a given time period. A vintage 1980s chicken harness was produced and sold during the Reagan administration, meaning it counted towards the GDP in 1985 and can't be counted again today. Just say no, you know? But if you love all things vintage, fear not. The item itself might not contribute to the GDP, but the service of selling it does. The hipster behind the cash register is paid in exchange for her labor. And that money spent by the vintage store on their workers in the factor market does count towards GDP. Any profit the vintage store makes on secondhand harnesses counts too. For instance, uh, if a vintage vendor picks up this particular harness at a garage sale for 50 cents and then sells it to a hipster for 50 bucks, that 49.50 is considered the value of the services provided by the reseller. It's also important to remember that only final goods count towards a country's GDP too. A final good is the end good made during the production process, meaning it doesn't need any extra processing and is ready to hit the shelves as is. All the little bits that go into the production process don't count. If we counted the breathable pink mesh in those little plastic harness buckles and the completed harness, we'd be double counting. Instead, all of those are intermediate inputs, or the goods that are part of the production process. Intermediate inputs change during production to produce the final good, like ingredients in a recipe. Some other notable examples would be the oranges and orange juice, or the caffeine, taurine, glucuronolactone, sucrose, glucose, B-group vitamins, water in shiny metal can, and Red Bull. None of which count towards GDP. Neither does the money spent on land, labor, and capital, which are known as the inputs of production. You could think of them as pretty much any resource required to create a thing, like the idyllic plot of land on which to build your chicken harness factory or Red Bull distillery, uh, the workers on the factory floor, and all the equipment they have to operate. Even though you need all these intermediate inputs and inputs of production, it's still only the finished chicken harness or energy drink itself that counts towards a country's GDP. Now, when it comes to actually coming up with that pretty little total you can compare with past years or even other countries, there are many ways to skin the cat, uh, walk the hen, uh, do fancy economics math to come up with a general measure. But the most common is the expenditure approach, which adds up everything that everyone in a certain country has to spend on domestically produced goods and services made in a given year. Economists start by calculating consumption, which is the money residents spend on those domestic goods and services, stuff like t-shirts or haircuts or Carl's chicken walking service. Then you can add in investment, which is when businesses or firms purchase goods like sewing machines. Of course, the government is also a big buyer, so you've got to add in government expenditures, money spent on crucial things like roads and public education, as well as, you know, tanks and guns and stuff. The final ingredient in our GDP recipe is net exports, or the money made on all the products a country ships out internationally, minus the stuff it buys from other countries as imports. You can find the net exports of a country by taking all of the goods and services your country produces and sells in other countries and subtracting all of the goods and services we buy from other countries. When a country imports more than it exports, NX actually comes out to a negative number. And as you can probably guess from the popularity of Chinese chicken harnesses, squishmallows, and tapioca pearls for your refreshing boba tea, here in the United States, that's usually how it goes. But for big exporters like China, Germany, or Norway, things are reversed, with these countries turning a profit on their exports even after everything they buy from other countries. Add all that consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports together, and ta-da! You got yourself a GDP. And once you got the formula down, you can just plug in the numbers to find the GDP of any country. Take Norway. In 2017, Norway's households consumed about 1.9 trillion Norwegian krona worth of goods. Business and invested about 1.2 trillion krona, or 113.94 billion US dollars. The Norwegian government is a famously big spender, supporting Norwegians with social benefits and programs like paid family leave and public health care. 
In 2017, those government expenses came out to about 1 trillion krona. Finally, Norway is one of those countries exporting a lot more than it imports, thanks to its extensive stores of natural gas and petroleum. Norway exported 1.5 trillion krona worth of goods in 2017, while importing only 1.4 trillion. So their net exports for the year came out to about 100 billion krona, or 9.17 billion US dollars. So for Norway, consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports all add up to a grand old GDP total of 4.2 trillion krona. Understanding GDP can go a long way towards helping you understand what the cluck those economists on the news are talking about but also what's going on when you purchase a chicken harness of your own and what's happening in your country's economy as a whole. But GDP is just one way to measure the health of an economy, and it certainly doesn't tell a complete story. So we have a lot of questions to ask, like how do things like production or inflation rates affect our handy dandy formula? Does GDP actually give us a good picture of a standard of living of a country? Is a chicken harness a good investment for you personally? Thankfully, there are other measures that can tell us even more than nominal GDP alone. And we're about to get into them right here on this channel. And as for that last question, that unfortunately is not for economists to say. If you're enjoying this series and are interested in taking the full study hall macroeconomics course and earning college credit from ASU, check out gostudyhall.com or click on the button to learn more. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like, comment, and smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.